As of version 18.5, Houdini has a new rigging system called KinniFX. It is a massive improvement over the old system and brings improvements to animation retargeting and animation blending. In this video, we'll look at the most basic elements of rigging. The first will be deformers. These are usually referred to as bones, but in KinniFX it is better to think of them as joints. The second would be adding controls to the rig. The controls will be needed for animators to use the rig more easily. In this video, I'll look at the most basic FK setup. The final aspect of rigging is deformation. This is where we'll drive the mesh with the joint transformations. KinniFX moves the rigging into SOPs, which means the entire rigging system is now in the same context. Previously, we would have a bone, and this bone would have two components. The first is the capture region, which is used for deformation. The second bone is the bone link node. This can also be used for deformation, but it is primarily used for the display of the bone geometry. We no longer need these anymore, but we will still encounter references to them when performing deformations in KinniFX. In KinniFX, we will use points for rigging. However, we will refer to them as joints. These joints are essentially just transformations, and all we really need for rigging is a transformation and a hierarchy. KinniFX will allow us to make a rig out of any points, but I will not explore that in this video. We will instead start with a very basic tool for building rigs, and this node will be found under KinniFX and is called Skeleton. This node will give us a workflow that is similar to the traditional rigging workflow. Press enter in the viewport with the node selected, and the options on the top of the viewport will allow you to control the node, and they are the following. Name is where we can name the joint. Child compensation will allow you to move the points independently of the hierarchy. We then have two editing modes, create and modify. Scale Inheritance will control how the child joints inherit scaling. And Joint Placement will allow you to control how the joints are made. The Tweak node is used for joint manipulation. The Snap tools all work with this node. I'll turn on Snap to Grid and then draw the bones. And I'll press Enter to finish. I select the first point and I rename it to root. I can also set this point's color. The next point will be called middle and I can set the color as well. The final point will be the effector. So now I have three joints, the effector, the middle and the root. If I want to view the hierarchy, I can go to the new pane tab and then I can go to animation and open rig tree and here we can see the parenting structure. I've created the bones and now we'll need to manipulate them. The bones can be positioned with the Rig Pose node. When selecting this node, I can press Enter in the viewport and I can rotate my joints. The transformation will then be registered within these nodes. These transforms are relative to the original position of the points. There are also quite a few ways to visualize the rig. The most straightforward is the Visualize Rig node. If we select this node, it will show the transforms. This node also inherits the point color. If we turn on Show Parent to Child, we can see the hierarchy relationship. Most importantly, we have a representation of the coordinate space. There are tools to change the coordinate space, but they're not applicable to this video. The most important thing with coordinate spaces is to keep them consistent. We can then take a look at how these coordinates are presented on the points themselves in the geometry spreadsheet. The first attributes are the point positions. These will be used for translation of the joints since the points are already giving us the world translation. The world transform is actually separated into a rotation matrix and a translation vector in KinniFX with the translation vector being the point position. We then have the color attributes for the point color. Then there will be 16 attributes for the local transform. This will start with local transform 0 and end with local transform 15. 
and this is a 4x4 matrix. The local transforms are not the most important part of KineFX, as KineFX tends to be more reliant on the world transforms. Next we have the joint names. These are very important as most of the rig will be organized off point names. We then have the point scale inheritance. And finally we have the transform. This matrix is a 9x9 matrix and it stores the world rotation. So now I have a skeleton and we can pose it using the rig pose node. But what we have is not really accessible to an animator who does not understand rigging. So instead of selecting the points and dealing with them directly, we want to create controls for the rig. And attaching controls to the joints is actually very simple. And we're going to do it with a attach control geometry node. The attach control geometry node will copy geometry to the points. We can use any geometry. As this is a basic example, I'll start with a box. We can also use a control node. And in this case, I'll just set this to a sphere. These nodes will need to have a name attribute. I'll add this with the name node and I'll name the box box and the control will be named sphere. I can then merge these nodes and these will be connected to the attach control geometry node. I'll then add some controls to the attach control geometry node. First, I'll select the joint the control will be connected to. The joint will be specified using the name attribute. I can then use the controls name to specify the control. The controls now match the joint's transforms. We can modify the controls transforms, but this transform will happen in the joint space. So this movement will happen in the local space of the joint. If I want to move the control in the joint's y-axis, I'll need to move the control in the control's y-axis. We can also copy a single control to multiple points. If I select the middle joint and the effector, I can then use the sphere control for both joints. Now I can use the rig pose node and it will give me far more accessible controls. This is the basic system for attaching controls. It is a very simple system, but it is very flexible especially when we start to use constraints with either VEX or VOPS. Next we'll work on the deformation. Deformation is not particularly difficult and bringing the rig into the SOPS context makes the process a lot more elegant. We will begin by getting the Bone Capture Lines node. This node is used to specify which bones are in the rig. If we plug in our skeleton we'll find that the bones are being defined by the points. This is done using the name attribute. If the point display is on, it will show how the bones are being captured. We can alter how this works using the Resample Segments option, but I will tend to leave this as default. I'll then turn off Capture Pose as we are no longer using the Capture node that comes in the object space bone. The same applies to Bone Link. Now that we have defined the bones, I'll use the Test Embed node. This node used to be called Solid Embed 2.0. This node will create a tetrahedral mesh around our geometry, and this mesh is used to determine the point weights. We can turn off enlarged input mesh. We want our tetrahedral mesh to conform to our original geometry. The next node that we want is a bone capture biharmonic. The first port will be connected to our original mesh. The second port will be connected to the tetrahedral mesh. This node will calculate the weights for the deformation and transfer them to the original mesh. Next we'll add a stash node. I can store the weights in this node rather than constantly having to update them. To store it I'll click on the stash input button. Finally we can apply the deformation. This will be done using the Bone Deform node. The first input of the Bone Deform node will be connected to the Stash node. We now have a deformation, but it is not correct. To conform this deformation to our actual rig, I'll connect the Pose control to the final input. The middle input is used for the rest pose. 
In this case, I'll just plug in my original skeleton. Then in order to make my deformation easier to modify, I'll add a Capture Layer Paint node. This will allow us to use the paint tools to edit the weights on our mesh. In order to see the bones, I can plug the Pose Rig node into the final input of this node. And now we would appear to have a completed rig, but we actually have a problem. If we look at the painted weights, we'll see we have another weight color at the bottom of the last bone. To illustrate the problem, I'll select the Capture node, we can select the Capture Regions, and we have three regions here, the root, the middle, and the effector. I do not need weights for the effector, but I can select it and paint weights on the rig. The reason for this is that every joint name will be read as an individual capture region. In order to fix this, I'll need to rename the effector to have the same name as the joint that precedes it. In this case, it will be the middle. In order to fix this, I'll use a name node. The method I'm using is a brute force method. When actually creating a rig, I prefer to use something more procedural. In this case, I'll manually specify the final point, which will be 2. This node will need to be set to points. I'll then change the name to be middle. I'll then need to update my stash node. I'll also want to update my scene. My points for the deformers are now named root, middle and middle. The weights I have painted for the effector have now all been removed from the mesh, leaving zero values. And I can now repaint the values for the middle deformer. Although in this case it is easy to replace the capture layer paint node. That's the basics of what you need to know to work with Kine effects. We'll then ramp up complexity either with solver nodes or with VEX and VOPS constraints. We can also make the controls more accessible by connecting them to an HDA.